שבוע טוב, חזקים ברוכים. אני רוצה ההלכה, that's related to one of the many הלכות, the myriad, אלפי אלפי הלכות that we were taught by מורנו ורבנו, עטרת ראשנו, חמו ועדיה זה יוסף, זכר צדיק לברכה, ג' מלכי שוון, נהילולה, רב מרן. Just מעניין לעניין, I was working on yesterday a little bit, הלכות of הדלקת נרות על ערב שבת, and there is a מחלוקת עם ראשונים, when a person accepts Shabbat upon themselves, specifically if by lighting Shabbat candles, does that automatically bring Shabbat upon the person? Shittat Bahag is that when a person lights Shabbat candles, they have accepted Shabbat. Shittat Ur Zarua is that when by lighting the Shabbat candles alone, we do not necessarily accept Shabbat. A person does not automatically accept Shabbat by, by merely light, lighting the candles. When is this relevant? To many, many cases, but certainly when a person lights uh, Shabbat candles, said a person lights in the summertime, Shabbat candles earlier than the actual, within half an hour of, uh, of Shabbat. He lights early, Plaga Mincha, we have an early Minyan, significantly before the arrival of Shabbat. So in that case, because you're lighting so far in advance of Shabbat, in that case you actually do have to accept upon yourself to do Shabbat Shabbat. So that it's clear that the candles that I'm lighting are for Shabbat. So when a person lights Shabbat candles more than a half hour before Shabbat, you are obligated to accept the Shabbat upon yourself. If you're lighting the candles within a half hour of Shabbat, you do not have to accept the Shabbat upon yourself at that time. Let's say a person is lighting the Shabbat candles significantly before Shabbat, three hours, come on, let's say, an hour and a half before Shabbat. He's lighting the candles after Plaga Mincha, an hour and a half before Shabbat, let's say, before Shabbat arrives. And we said, uh, you know, he has to accept the Shabbat upon himself at that time. If he knows that there's certain menachot he has to do, for example, he still would, would like to drive to the Beit Knesset. He's lighting the candles in his house before he leaves. But he wants to drive the Beit Knesset. In that case, he's allowed to make a stipulation. He's allowed to make a condition. And although I am accepting the Shabbat upon myself, it's not in regards to this menachah that I plan on doing as well. So you are accepting the Shabbat to a degree, and that way the candles that I've lit are reflected in that, that it's, uh, it's for Shabbat. At the same time, I leave myself certain malachot that I'm able to do. This halacha is also relevant for a woman who very often is the one who lights the candles. If it happens to be a lel tevila, if it's a night upon which a woman has to go to the mikveh, if it happens to be a Friday night, but she knows she has to, let's say, do malacha between when she lights the candles and leaves the mikveh, so she's allowed to make the stipulation. But the stipulation is only necessary when you're lighting more than a half hour in advance before Shabbat. If you're lighting a half hour before Shabbat, then it's not required to accept Shabbat upon yourself at that time. That is the hour position. What is one halacha that Chama Badia was very strong about? It's the or- order of lighting and making the bracha on the Shabbat candles. The same way we have mitzvah of the, the halacha of making brachot over la siyatan, we make the bracha always prior to doing the act of the mitzvah. The same principle applies when we light the Friday night candles. A person should make the bracha and then you light the Friday night candles. Over la siyatan. Fita of the Ashkenazim is like the Ramah, not that way. Ramah brings the Ashomrim that first you light the candles. And then you make the bracha. What's the machloket based on? It's based on this previous machloket that we just described now. According to Ashkenazim, since you are accepting, according to Shittat Ashkenazim, you're accepting the Shabbat by lighting the candles. So how could you make the bracha first and then light the candles? Once you make the bracha upon the candles, you've already accepted Shabbat, just like by Yom Kippur. So once you make the bracha, you've already accepted Yom Kippur upon yourself. So how could you light the candles after making the bracha? So therefore Ashkenazim say, first light the candles. That way you've gotten the melacha out of the way. Then you can recite the bracha. Chama Badia upheld the position of Shuchan Aruch. That's not the proper order. And we always make the bracha beforehand. We make the bracha beforehand and then we light the candles. The, right, there is a even amongst the Svaradim, but the Chama Badia was to make the bracha first. But one additional piece that Chama Badia writes in Chazun Badia in Halachot of Yom Tov, he writes that when it comes to lighting candles for Yom Tov, even Ashkenazim, really, in logic, should do like us as well. They should make the bracha beforehand, because the whole reason why they make the they light the candles first is because they don't want to do melacha after the bracha, because they hold that's accepting Shabbat. But on Yom Tov, to light the candles is not a melacha. So therefore, the proper order of Ovel Asiyatan, first making the bracha and then doing the mitzvah, should be the case on Yom Tov, even for Ashkenazim. So, and that, the truth is, I've seen other Ashkenazim poskim which make the same point. One of the contemporary poskim in America, of Daniel Yehuda Neustadt, who's a, a, a Arab in Abedin in Lakewood, he says the same thing. He says, Ashkenazim also, by, by lighting candles before Yom Tov, they should first recite the bracha, and then go ahead and do the mitzvah like always. 
just to say uh, in, in one line so much that we that we learn from the life of a gadol shebagdolim and the statue of Chamavad Yam. There's so much that we can learn, so many different uh, pieces to his legacy, to his moreshet that we were able to learn from him. But certainly one thing, one thing which is, um, along with all the other m- lessons and messages, but one thing is, Chobad Yad lived the life of Hayom Katsir Ramelacha Merubah, which means that we say in Pekia Avot, there's not enough time, the day is short, and the workload is tremendous. Chobad Yad was somebody to every single moment possible, whether it was for Limud, whether it was for Ketivat Sfarim, for studying, for writing Sfarim, or for as his constant mission in life to always bring more and more people closer to Torah and Mitzvot, closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That's the attitude that he had when he was a young man. Mentioned in the past, he lived mamash in abject poverty. Even as, as a married person raising a family, he had no money. Before the Dayanut, before the Rabbanut, he had no money. Studied Torah Baaniut, and even at that time, he had to do whatever he could to make money. There was a certain Rosh Hashiva that would always give an incentive. Any Avrech who comes and tells him a certain type of Chidush in Gemara, that he gives that person a certain payment, a certain stipend for Shabbat. Chamavadiya needed the money. So he would always prepare the types of Divrei Torah that this Rosh Hashiva had in mind, so he could go on Friday morning, and then he would get some money to be able to buy something for Shabbat. Chamavadiya, he's saying in Divar Torah to one of the Gdolim, what was his, what he say later in life about this? He said, Chava. In the time that I had to spend preparing those types of Divrei Torah, I could have grabbed another Beit Yosef. I could have studied another Beit Yosef. Another Beit Yosef. That was his mission in life. His mission in life was to say more halachot and say more chidushim and more psakim. This is the, whether it's the intellect or the memory or whatever the circumstances were. But a person should live with an attitude of Chazal. Of Hayom Katsir Ve'amelacha Meruba. There's a lot to do. There's no sitting around. We have a lot to cover. We have Shas, we have Poskim, we have Arachot, we have Gimana, we have Mishnayot. Baruch Hashem, we have the Shabbat, we start Limud, Masechet, Shabbat, and Mishnayot. Two, three Mishnayot every Shabbat, but we're here anyway. Bezal Hashem, we'll be Misayim and Simchat Torah. We're going to continue with other Mishnayot as well. Also, today we'd like to begin um, in, the, in the spirit of Chamavadya to grab little bits. Whoever is wanting, interested in being Nistarev, there is a new cycle for the Daf HaShavua program every week. One daf, daf hashavua. They just started this week, Sunday or some kirot on Shabbat with Masechet Nedarim Hashkacha. We have ten copies of Masechet Nedarim in the Mitifta edition. It's just a few minutes daf hashavua. You don't do the whole daf every single day. It's you do a quarter of the daf every single day. And over the course of the week, you finish that that, that particular daf. Any person who's interested in, to make the commitment, to make the commitment, whether it's easy, whether it's not easy, whether it's fun or not fun or interesting or not interesting. <coughs> when a person makes commitment to a limud, then he sticks with it regardless of the circumstances. So Bezer Hashem, that's going to be available right now to start that again in the, in the Zikaron and also in the legacy of Chamovadia Yosef, Rabbi Hanam Kashomer, Atzak, Hadosh Baruch Hu, Lezakot, Yisalafikach, Rabbanah, Hemtomet, Toshimah, Gosh, Mosikoh, Yudut, Rav, Yadir.